All right. Well, welcome to Exploring C Sharp Components. I'm James Sturdivant. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, I'm a contributor to the Bytecode Alliance uh, and also a maintainer at RunWASI, which helps you run WASM components in Kubernetes. Uh, and we're going to be talking about ComponentTides.net today, one of the maintainers there. Uh, and I'm a 98.3% Iron Man. Um, very recently, my daughter likes to remind me of that, uh, that the swim got canceled, and so I didn't quite become a full Iron Man. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start off pretty slow today and build as we go. Uh, the idea here will be to take a look at how the tools work uh, and then build a deeper understanding of what they're doing so that later on when we use the more advanced tools, we don't feel like it's just magic. So we're going to take a quick look at components and WIT. Uh, we'll take a look at how .NET uh, adds WASI support. And then we're going to do some binding, bind, binding generation, as well as look at how .NET simplifies the developer experience and talk a little bit about what's coming next. One thing I want to mention is that about a year ago, uh, you weren't actually really able to build WASI components. Uh, and there's been a lot of work over the last year. And so uh, this is, a lot of this is still pretty early. Uh, and so uh, help out where, where you can. Uh, so let's start with what a component is. Uh, this is going to be a pretty simplified view of what a component is, but uh, I realize that not everybody understands what the component is, and I wanted to make sure we have a good mental model for when we dive into the code and start to work on it. So it all starts with some code. The, uh, then we can uh, build it into a component or a module, but that module has some challenges. There's only about four types in the WASM module, um, and there's no way to interface with the ex external world. Uh, and so the way that we solve that in a component world is to import something. So we can import an interface, say HTTP, and that HTTP, uh, we delegate everything to the host or to some other component. And we just say, when I want to make a request out, I'm going to use this HTTP interface and make the request out. So that solves part of the problem, but the component doesn't know how to be called. There's no way for it to be called at this point. Uh, and so we need to export uh, a run function. And that run function uh, can then be called by other components or by uh, a host. So then we can introduce a host who knows how to call the run function and also exports that interface of HTTP. Once we do that, uh, we can then run that component. Now, you're, you have another team that comes in and asks for some uh, headers added to all of the requests going out. You could go in into a host and modify the host and add those headers. Or you could add an additional uh, component that exports HTTP and then imports HTTP. It will just add the headers and then delegate the rest to the host. You put those together, and your component looks very similar to what it did before. You can create the host, and now you can run that component, and you've got that additional functionality without changing the host. So hopefully that gives you a kind of a mental model of how components work with the host. Um, but why would we use components? Uh, we would want all the WASM benefits, uh, cross-platform, fast, secure, small. Uh, but we also want to interface with the external systems, as we saw there. We want to be able to share the functionality across teams and across different systems. Uh, and then there's some really interesting things that come out of this, is that we can stand statically analyze the component, make sure it doesn't have access to critical components like maybe our key value store, uh, if it was an external component that was being imported in. And then it simplifies development pretty greatly. Uh, so imagine having a component, and the only thing you have to impl implement is this handle function. Why c -sharp in components? Uh, well, you love c -sharp. Uh, It's got a special place in my heart. It was the first language that uh, I developed in professionally and really uh, learned a lot there. Uh, it actually generates WASI 0.2 components out of the box, so you don't have to compose it together with uh, an adapter component or anything like that. When you build it, you actually get the WASI 02 component. 
Uh, and then we have .NET API support for common WASI interfaces, CLI, HTTP. We're going to dive into that a little bit later and talk about how that um, actually comes together. Uh, and now, uh, the thing we're also going to look at is Componentize.NET. It helps you get all these things started, makes it much simpler than um, what we're going to see initially. So there's essentially two flavors in .NET right now. Um, they're uh, for WASI support. The first one is Mono. It's uh, very similar to the, the Blazor. Uh, it's an interpreter. Um, you can do reflection in it. Um, you, it comes with SDK. Uh, you get stack traces. And um, I have to say that it is an experimental support. So it is not something that um, you're going to be able to call up and get deep support. It's all through GitHub and things like that. The other flavor uh, that has support right now is a native AOT. This is in the runtime labs. Um, it has a potential for faster startups because it's uh, compiled ahead of time. It has, um, it has typically has had the first implementations of WASI uh, coming, up, coming out. So it's kind of a place where people experiment and try things, and then it gets upstreamed back into the runtime. Uh, and this is done mostly by the community. Uh, it's not in the actual .NET runtime. So let's go ahead and build a component. So uh, we talked about the component, and this is essentially the shape of the component. It has imports and exports. Uh, they can actually be the same thing as we saw previously. Um, but we need a way to define what the imports and exports look like. And in um, the WASI world, the way we do that is through wit. Uh, so here you can see there's an import for the add function, an export for the, for the other function. And we've got that interface and the shape of the component that we're going to be working with. So we've got to be able to translate this wit into C sharp. So the way we do that is through some attributes. Uh, in C sharp, we export them. So we can use this attribute on top of a function uh, that says this is the name of the function that if you call it, you will get this implementation. And then on imports, you're going to see DLL import, uh, very similar to doing a DLL import in any other project. Uh, the, the additional attribute that we have there is the WASM import linkage. And that's going to uh, just give a little bit extra metadata to let the compiler know that this is going to be called by a WASM component eventually. Pretty simple. Well, uh, WIT has a whole bunch of different types uh, as, as soon as you get into this. Um, and so you got lists, you got results. You have to know how to translate between uh, the linear model, uh, memory model inside the component to these lists so that we can use them in C sharp. Uh, and then you also have to lift and lower those. Uh, and so this gets complicated very quickly. Uh, so you're not going to want to necessarily put all of that code in there. Um, so here's an example of uh, lowering a list down, uh, a, list, a list of strings into, into C sharp so that you can then use it later on, just like you would in a list. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of stuff going on in there. <clears throat> That's where wit bind gen comes in. Wit bind gen takes the wit, you run it through wit bind gen, and you get some C sharp coming out. Uh, and it's going to look very similar to those initial ones that we saw, but it handles all the different types for you, handles all the lifting and lowering. Uh, and then you add a little bit of code, and you compile it, and you get a component wasm out. So uh, there's a whole bunch of tools that you need to use here uh, to, to get this uh, all working. So today we're going to uh, be using the native ahead of time compiler. Uh, we'll use whip bind gen. We'll uh, use WASM tools to inspect the component. Uh, and then we'll compose components using WAC. Uh, and then you also need to have the WASI SDK in your, your uh, system. So let's take a look at what all of that looks like. Uh, and again, this first demo. We're going to do this all manually. And then the second demo, we'll go and see how some of the tooling and uh, how .NET can help simplify it. OK. It started playing. OK, I think we're started. So this is a simple world. Uh, it's a simple export of that function. Um, it's going to take two integers and return an integer. And in our CSproj, we did a .NET new. And then we're going to add a little bit of extra additional um, properties 
The first one is, hey, we're gonna go target the WASI target so that the compiler knows that it's gonna generate a WASI um, binary. And then we're gonna say we wanna be self-contained because we want um, uh, a single binary. We don't want all the DLLs kind of all over the place. We want them all packaged up nicely for us. We're gonna include allow safe blocks. This um, is needed for all the, jet, the bindings. Uh, and then we also need the WASI SDK so that we can uh, compile it all together. Next up, we need to um, add the native ahead of time compiler. That's going to bring in uh, the appropriate things to compile down to bytes, down to WASM. And, uh, and then we need to link in the wit, and this is passed off to the WASI SDK so that um, it knows how to actually put the uh, WASM binary together. Now we'll, um, we can go ahead and publish this. Um, and when we run publish, we get uh, a binary. The one last thing I did here was the dist publish. It's just a little helper so that I didn't have to type as much um, when I'm copying the, the files around. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wit for this file. If we look at it, we should ex we expect to see um, an exported function, which is that exported wit uh, file that we had there. Uh, and if we don't include this particular line, we would actually, it would all compile and look good, but we wouldn't actually export the um, function there. So it's super important to, to call that out. Uh, and this is the implementation. Uh, we put that unmanaged callers in there and the WASM export. And you can see this was a really simple function, really simple way to get it started here. And so uh, there's an example host that knows how to call that export uh, and, um, and then print it out to, to the console for us. So we're gonna transition. We're gonna create a component and we're gonna compose it together with the other component. So we're gonna switch, switch over to this wrapper. Um, and in here, uh, it's gonna be very similar to what we did before. Um, the uh, wit is gonna look a little different because we're gonna wrap it. So we're gonna uh, create something so that we can um, export the, uh, sorry, we can import the exported ad from the previous one, and then we're gonna re-export it for um, the, the host. Now, uh, this time we're gonna use WhitBindGen to actually generate the code. Uh, so we pass WhitBindGen C Sharp and pass it the wit, and we get a bunch of C Sharp bindings coming out. Uh, these are a little bit more involved. So you'll see um, there's an interface, and this is how we know the thing that we need to uh, implement for uh, this particular world. And then there's a bunch of extra type helps that we're actually not using in this particular instance. And then we have um, this, those very similar functions with import and add. Um, I think there's water coming down from the ceiling. <laughs> uh, so the implementation, we're gonna go over and uh, import it. Uh, I actually found this, this says exports and we're using an import, which is kind of funny. Uh, I think because we're using a raw export, it, there's a bug in the binding generation that um, forces that to be in the exports namespace, which is uh, just a, a bug that we can fix. Uh, we're gonna wrap it. If the answer is 42, we'll uh, print out some extra information. So here it's uh, building. Oops. Oh man. <laughs> okay, can't fast forward. This happened to me last time I did this too. I thought I tested this and it worked. Um, uh, so I guess what happens in the rest of the demo is that the, uh, we, we compose them together using WAC and we get that inf extra information printed out. Um, we'll see this again later in the, in the next demo. So we'll go ahead and get steps. So uh, if you're thinking, hey, that's a lot of steps um, and that's uh, a lot of tools to use, you're right. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts here. 
Um, and so the ne this next part of the presentation, we're gonna see how does .NET help make this uh, a little simpler for us to, to get started with. Uh, so we've uh, gone through WIT worlds. Um, we, we did a very simple WIT world where we expect, exported a, a simple function that did some addition. But uh, these worlds can get complicated very quickly. Uh, and there's two that ship with WASI 0.2. The WASI HTTP um, is one of them, and the CLI is the other. And there's many others. Uh, there's TCP messaging, Bob Store, WASI Cloud. There's a whole bunch of different implementations out there that you can bring in. Uh, this WIT world code, and sorry if it's a little small, um, is fairly challenging. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, and to implement the code, uh, you get these bindings, and then you gotta go use these bindings uh, and the, the C-sharp code to use these bindings looks pretty ugly. Uh, there's, if you look on line seven there, there's a res result of a result of an incoming from some future thing, and then we have to unpack it and check if it's okay. Uh, we have to do all these extra steps. And this is because of the way that wit types kind of interact with the result types and things. Um, and so uh, we don't want to necessarily do that to make an HTTP request. And so, uh, in the, we, we really want to make that more like developer friendly. And so in the .NET libraries, we've uh, encapsulated that behind the scenes for you. And so now you can just use HTTP client like you normally would. You create it, add some headers, make the request, get a response back, and you don't need to change anything. Uh, and .NET will take care of generating all that kind of nasty code that we saw behind the scenes. So um, you don't have to necessarily know how to, all the different WIT types and things. And we can see that again with um, TCP. So there's a TCP client. Uh, we call connect on the host and the port. We get the stream, we send the stream off, and uh, we can use it like we would in .NET. And again, there's a very complicated code unwrapping results and things behind the scenes, but we don't need to manage that ourselves. And then componentize.net brings all those tools that we saw in the last demo, WIT bind gen, uh, WAC, all the various things, the SDK, and make sure that it's all set up on your, your system without you having to necessarily do much. Uh, and so, and then it also automatically generates the WIT bindings. You point it at a WIT file, it'll generate the WIT bindings for you, make sure it gets all compiled in, make sure that WIT is linked into the WASI SDK. Uh, and then, uh, pulling down like the WASI HTTP interfaces, there's a whole bunch of WIP that you need to know. We can store that in an OCI registry and the tooling will help bring that down locally. And I did a talk with uh, Taylor Thomas yesterday on this and we demonstrated how we could build it on a Windows machine, run it on a Mac, run it in Kubernetes, run it in several different platforms. Uh, and so you can check that out there. And <clears throat> finally, uh, we can also uh, automate some of the c composition of the various components together for um, using the componentize.net. And you get all of that for just adding a single package. All right, so we're gonna dive into this demo. <clears throat> this time I won't skip ahead. <laughs> okay, so I did .NET new. Uh, and the um, only thing I added here was the runtime identifier and the self-contained. And then uh, we're gonna, oh, and uh, I, I mentioned the exe there, and that, that's gonna become important in a second. Uh, we add the .NET um, componentize package, and again, I've got that publish step there. We write our code just like we would, so this is the HTTP client. Uh, we make the requests. And uh, we, we can even use async await. There is a little small thing here. Um, then this, this should go away over time, but this is how we enable async await, is we've got this, uh, some tooling underneath the hood in the library. And right now we need to add this extra little bit of code, um, but that should go away once async uh, support comes into the .NET, uh, sorry, into WASI. So let's go ahead and publish that component. Uh, this is going to go ahead and um, build. And what I want to call out while this is building is 
we haven't written any wit. There's no uh, additional libraries that we added. There's no wit bindgen. There's nothing there. Um, and the only thing we did was say, hey, target WASI. And the, and the rest of .NET figured out, hey, we are, you're targeting WASI. We're going to find the right WIT files for you. We're going to link everything in properly. And uh, you're going to get a WASM component at the end. OK. So uh, let's take a look at what that WIT looks like for the component that we uh, just built with the HTTP. Uh, if we look at the, the WASM, we're going to see an import for HTTP and an export for run. Now, again, we didn't necessarily explicitly ask for those, but it was smart enough to figure that out. Uh, and you'll notice that in the previous demos, we didn't have that uh, WASI HTTP uh, function in there. Okay, so now we've, we've made a request. It is randomly going out to the, or it is actually going out to the HTTP endpoint and getting a random result back. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to link in some more, uh, some, some WIT. We're going to show you how WIT is used from componentize.net. So excuse myself. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of code to type out. And so, um, OK, so we've got this new WIT. We've got uh, that simple example world. We're going to reuse the components that we, we built earlier. Uh, we go over to the CSproj. The one thing we add in here is a component dot Net, uh, componentize.net has this wit uh, property that you can say, hey, use this wit, and it's going to uh, find the wit that you found, uh, and then it's going to uh, invoke wit bind gen and link everything in. And then finally, uh, instead of having to manually call WAC every single time at the end of our component, we can use um, a target that specifically um, runs after publish, finds the previously composed binary, uh, and then um, it well, links those together. Sorry, I'm getting rained on right now. <laughs> There's water falling down my back. Uh, so when this publishes, uh, behind the scenes, uh, componentize.net will go find um, that WIT file. It will execute WIT bind gen against it. it. This is where it actually all lives, and then it will bring that in when it compiles. Uh, so if you do need to go look at the underlying uh, C sharp that was generated, it's there, um, and you can act, have access to it. And the last thing we did was inside our, our function, we uh, did an import, uh, again, uh, and, and called the, the component. So let's take a quick look at the wit that was generated for that composed component. Here, uh, we'll see WASI HTTP and WASI CLI. Uh, and the, even though we just had some WIT that imported the, um, the, uh, the adder function, we don't see that here. Uh, and why don't we see that? It's because we actually composed those two together. And so the actual end, end uh, shape of that component doesn't have that in there. If we go and look at the console, this is before we compose them together with WAC, we can see that we didn't act, actually have that import. And once we put them together, the end result was the one that we were expecting to come out. OK. So uh, we will go ahead and run this in WASM time. Uh, we'll, we want to run the component. If we ran the console right there, it's actually not going to work because we don't have all the requirements at the WASI layer. Uh, so it called out to 142 uh, and 42, and finally uh, 40 plus 2, which is what we coded in the previous one, uh, gives us that answer to life. So we added that additional metadata. So we just composed together a whole bunch of components, um, and we, we didn't have to interact with any of those tools underneath. So the last thing we're going to take a look at here is um, the OCI support. We're going to switch over to WASI HTTP. Uh, and um, here, we're again, uh, we're going to, instead of creating an executable, we're going to create a library, because uh, there is no actual run entry point. We're going to link in the componentize.net. And then um, we're going to add the link, the, the, the wit, but we're going to add a couple of extra properties. 
One is the world that we're targeting and the registry that we want to pull that WIT down from. Um, and so this is uh, one of the worlds that's shipped with WASI. And so we bring it down. And uh, when we publish this, it's going to go out to the OCI, bring down the WIT. It actually comes as a WIT package. We'll take a look at what that looks like in a second here. Um, and then it's going to call WIT bind gen on it. It's going to generate the bindings. And then we can implement our HTTP for that. So we can see in just a moment, yeah, the WIT, this is the WIT package. Um, WIT uh, is, it can be encoded inside an actual WASM component, uh, and that's the preferred way to do that. But we can see that WIT bindgen knows how to generate it, and we get all of the, the bindings for the proxy world right there. Uh, next, we go ahead and um, go into the namespace where we have the uh, incoming handler that we need to implement. We add a little bit of metadata and, and give a response. Uh, and then um, we can go ahead and run that. We're going to see it's on HTTP uh, 8080, switch over, and we can make a request in, um, to curl, and we'll see hello C from C sharp. OK, cool. Uh, so hopefully that shows you how .NET can actually simplify building these components. Uh, and Component Size Net can help you with some of the tooling around WIP bind gen and in integrating um, your WIP files into existing projects. So uh, what's coming up next? Uh, I, last week, I started to look. And we have a whole bunch of different projects across a whole different bunch of places. And so I've created this new uh, uh, project in GitHub where I've kind of compiled together. They're not necessarily fully prioritized right now, um, but it's something that we'll be working on going forward. Um, I, I wanted to put this up just so that folks know that uh, if you're interested, you can come uh, help out with some of this stuff uh, and also get a sense of where we are with uh, the implementation for C Sharp. Uh, and then uh, one of the really cool things, and we have the implementer in the room here, uh, uh, Pavel, uh, he is um, working on some debugging support. Uh, and so you can uh, F12, F5 on your project and step into your component, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, there's, I think it's still pretty early, early days for that, but uh, it is being worked on. And I wanted to say thanks to a bunch of contributors. Um, a year ago, I knew nothing about components. Uh, and I raised my hand and joined the uh, Bytecode Alliance C Sharp group. And all these folks have been very welcoming and uh, have taught me a lot about how all this stuff comes together. Uh, and so uh, in no particular order up there, uh, there's a whole bunch of people. And there's many others that have been helping out. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, and call out that like if you're interested and you don't really know anything about this, come join the, the meetings. Uh, ask us afterwards. Uh, everybody's very welcoming, and there's just a ton of work to get involved in. Uh, and I started out adding some unit tests, uh, and now I'm, uh, I've got a couple contributions in the works for uh, the runtime, which is kind of cool. So go ahead and get, uh, get involved. Try it out. Give some feedback. Uh, it's still very early days. There are rough edges, um, and we're, we're looking for feedback on how to improve the overall experience. I got a link to the project board there. Uh, and then uh, this QR code is a link to the C Sharp subgroup meetings. So you can uh, join and get the information to join those and come say hi. Uh, and then you can reach out on the Zulip chat. Uh, there's a C Sharp um, channel in there so that you can come say hi. Uh, but you can also just you know, reach out to anybody there. And that's what I got. So uh, I guess we can go to Q&A. Got one over there. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I covered a lot uh, in a very short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Like it is already a, you showed down at the higher level API based on the lower level API. I want to use the higher level 
<laughs> yeah. So the question was um, looking at the uh, HTTP interfaces that we showed, and we showed that we some, have some higher level, and we showed the outgoing. Um, is there a way to potentially do this type of thing with ASP.NET uh, applications? And there are prototypes out there of folks who have done this. Um, Spin has a nice SDK that wraps up some of this stuff uh, and gives you exactly what you're asking for. Um, there's nothing in the runtime itself right now, um, I, and I don't know if there ever will be, uh, but it, it's definitely potential, and people are doing it today. Yeah. And I guess the, the big value add there would be if I could take existing .NET ASP coordinate uh, code written in that middleware where style and be able to bring that over directly without switching to a new SDK. I'm yeah, that's where. Uh, there's quite a bit more that needs to come in uh, WASI before we can do that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, async support, uh, and then as well as threads to be able to, to fully bring things over like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, there's a proposal out there right now for WASI TLS. Um, it, a lot of projects will probably be calling from calling SQL, uh, and they need, you're going to need that type of. Uh, we, we added TCP, but you also need TLS on top of that to to do things. So. That actually probably dovetails to the next question. Do you know what uh, outbound gRPC connections might look like? Would that be on TLS or on top of HTTP? Or yeah, so it's actually being uh, discussed on top of HTTP right now. Okay. Yep. So we got HTTP two, uh, and there's a discussion in the WASI HTTP spec for that particular question. Yeah, and just I'm going to repeat it just for the audio. Um, the uh, Pavel had said um, uh, HTTP doesn't currently support HTTP two two. HTTP two, it's a gap that we know and is being worked on, and eventually we will be able to implement gRPC through that pathway. Awesome. The next one might be more of a native AOT question or or not, but uh, do you know is we use dynamic link a lot for for setting up queries against databases? Is that supported? Within a I don't know the answer to that one, yeah, um, but I can follow up and we can get a question afterwards. Um, I'm happy to answer more questions. I just want to make sure there's opportunity for other folks to ask questions as well, um, and we can catch up afterwards. Okay. I have a last one if that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. All right. The the last one is uh, Blazor has a, a native integration where you can take like C code and compile it into your WASM component through the MScript and SDK. Use P invokes. Are we going to have an equivalent one for uh, uh, .NET, componentized .NET via WASI SDK? I think I got a thumbs yes. up that that's, that's coming down the line. Yeah, so the um, componentized .NET is kind of the early iteration of this, uh, we're, so we can iterate quickly out in the community, but then eventually .NET is uh, like the uh, upstream project is actually working on getting all that kind of built into the entire uh, platform. Sorry, I was uh, just asking if uh, you, you could repeat the question from previous. Uh, what was the name of the library and uh, what was the usage? Uh, so before the last question, it was a question, I think it was, was it Weasel? Uh, I was asking about dynamic link. Uh, not the, the P invoke one or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the question I asked was, uh, Blazor has the uh, the ability to take a native library, something them, and compile it with them script in and call that from Blazor. And the the question was, will we have that same equivalence for for uh, using uh, the component model? Can I make a component that uses WASI SDK, compile some C library, and link it in all together? And now give an answer. So the WASI SDK is LLVM C toolchain, which is in a way similar to what mscripten does. And from .NET perspective, uh, it's a very similar build process that we are giving to the, to the SDK. And so 
it will eventually work. Uh, I will have to say this is statically linking your native library together with the .NET runtime, in this case, mono runtime. I don't really know exactly what is the situation on the LLVM side, but it will be probably very similar. Um, yeah. Cool. And I think we had one more question over here, and then I think we need to leave the room for thanks, folks. Thank you. Uh, for the garbage collection, does it use WASM GC? It does not currently. Yep. Uh, that's in the works eventually. Um, oh, it's not. Okay. Pavel's shaking his head. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I can try to explain. So, current uh, state of the uh, WASM GC uh, doesn't have all the features necessary to support needs of .NET runtime to implement garbage collector. One of the those which I remember is interior pointers. So in, in .NET you can have pointer into middle of some data structure and it will keep the keep alive the whole thing. And that's not currently possible with Wasm GC. That's just one of the gaps. Got it. There are a few more and so it's unlikely that we will go there. All right. Thank you. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, and we'll see you next time.